Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The ladies that buried Henry VIII's executed wife. Inside the walls of the Tower of London, on a cloudy May day in 1536, Anne Boleyn, the second wife of King Henry VIII, made her way to the executioner's scaffold. She was greeted by hundreds of witnesses, including the king's illegitimate son and the man who had expertly crafted her downfall and demise, Thomas Cromwell. She would lose her head in one swift strike from a French swordsman who had been brought over the English Channel to quickly and reliably take her head off. It was a queen's execution, if there was ever one, with expensive black velvet draped everywhere, and Anne today is considered a woman who was a victim of King Henry VIII, her husband. But 300 years after her death, her remains were dug up during repair works to the Tower of London's chapel. The surgeon and doctor of Queen Victoria identified them and described them as of a female between 25 and 30 years of age, of a delicate frame of body, and who had been of slender and perfect proportions. The forehead and lower jaw were small and especially well formed. The vertebrae were particularly small, especially one join, the atlas, which was that next to the skull, and that they bore witness to the queen's little neck. He also said that the bones of the head indicate a well-formed round skull with an intellectual forehead, straight orbital ridge, large eyes, oval face and rather square full chin. The remains of the vertebrae and the bones of the lower limbs indicate a well-formed woman of middle height with a short and slender neck. The ribs show depth and roundness of chest. The hands and feet bones indicate delicate and well-shaped hands and feet with tapering fingers and a narrow foot. It confirmed that Anne had died from a straightforward beheading, and there was no doubt that these bones belonged to Anne Boleyn. However, despite the shocking event, there are a number of questions that still exist regarding her burial. Who were the women that collected up her headless remains and her head, and then buried them in a church next to the scaffold? We know that these women were probably assigned to tend to Anne's wishes inside of the tower, and that they were not probably the chosen women she would have loved to spend her last moments with. Thomas Cromwell, the king's chief adviser, had enlisted a number of women to help spy on the queen, and to report anything that could be incriminating, and used in evidence against her. But as Anne was led to the scaffold on the 19th of May 1536, she was flanked by four women who were described as young. She then spoke to the crowd, and following her short speech, the ladies in attendance came forward and removed her mantle, and the queen showed her little neck to the crowd that the executioner would slice through. Then, after this, the ladies sobbed and cried, and Anne stood there emotionless and sombre. But following the swing of the sword, as mentioned, these women would then collect the remains of the queen, refusing help from men, as they believed it was a woman's job to gather the queen together and they then placed Anne's body inside of an oak chest which had been used to hold bow staves. They sealed the box shut, and then took this heavy box into the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, next to the scaffold, and there was little funeral ceremony, just the women lowering the box into an unmarked grave, which was then covered over. But who were these women? Throughout history, it's been debated who the women were that buried Anne Boleyn, the first woman, it's believed, out of the four in attendance was Mary Scrope, Lady Kingston, who was the wife of William Kingston, the constable of the Tower, who was in charge of her imprisonment. Mary had been present during Anne's trial, and she may have been appointed in the final days of Anne's life by Cromwell to continue to spy on Anne and to report evidence to the chief adviser and her husband. Another woman who was most definitely inside the tower with Anne Boleyn was Margaret Dymoke, or Margaret Coffin. She was married to Anne's master of the horse, William Coffin, and she was referenced in a letter by William Kingston. Margaret, it's believed, slept by Anne's feet in her final days, showing her loyalty. But another woman who was there, it's believed, was Lady Elizabeth Boleyn. She was married to Sir James Boleyn, Anne's uncle. 
and it's known that Lady Boleyn accompanied Anne to her trial days earlier inside of the tower, but it's not known why she was specifically chosen. However, the final woman that it's believed buried Anne Boleyn was Elizabeth Stoner, who was said to have been the mother of the maid, and she, inside of Anne's court, kept a close eye on the other maids of honour and ladies-in-waiting. She was a servant to Anne, and was very well known to her, but there have been other women who were rumoured to have been present, including Mrs Mary Orchid, Anne's former nurse, as well as Lady Anne Shelton, the sister of Thomas Boleyn. Anne was senior in Henry VIII's court, and she also looked after the household of Princess Elizabeth, Anne's daughter, but it's known that she was not a huge fan of Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn was not enamoured with the women whose company she was assigned in her final days, and she was not happy at all. There were many others she would have preferred to have spent her time with, and she had many closer friends, but these women, as mentioned, were not there to be friendly, but to more importantly spy on her for Cromwell. She didn't care too much for these women, but they were considered honest and good, but Anne knew why they were really there. She would have wanted to spend time with the ladies of her privy chamber, but these were not allowed to see her. One account of her execution found inside an archive in Vienna, written by an anonymous eyewitness, outlined some of the work of the ladies on the scaffold and fateful day of her execution, it said. The Queen finally was beheaded upon a scaffold with the tower, with the gates open. She was brought by the captain upon the said scaffold, and four young ladies followed her. A young lady presented her with a linen cap, with which covered her hair, and she knelt down, fastening her clothes about her feet, and one of the ladies said bandaged her eyes. Immediately the executioner did his office, and when her head was off, it was taken by a young lady and covered with a white cloth. Another account states that, on the scaffold, Anne thanked the four women for their service in her hardest moments. But regardless of whether they had been faithful to the Queen or not, seeing the execution of Anne Boleyn would have been a harrowing and shocking moment in their lives. Some may have bonded with her inside of the tower, and they believed it was their duty to gather up her remains with the blood still dripping on the scaffold and then collect them in an oak chest, before making their way to the chapel to bury her. Anne's body would remain inside the chapel for centuries until it was exhumed, and she was then reburied inside the chapel, under the high altar. But these women, it's believed, are the women that buried a queen, and they would not let any man touch her remains. This was a poignant day in English history, as a queen lost her head on the orders of her husband the king. Anne was very divisive as a queen, but her final moments and the brutality of them shocked the country, and even those who hated her were taken aback by the nature of her death inside the walls of the Tower of London. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.